Hello, SimJC here, and you can call me Sim. In this video, we're going to look at Adobe Creative Cloud. If you haven't heard the recent news, Adobe are now switching over to a subscription-based model. That means you cannot buy outright future versions of Photoshop, for example. Instead, you have to pay a monthly subscription to access those applications. Once you stop paying, your application stops working. You don't have to be continuously online, but you do have to be online once a month or so to keep your applications active. As you can see, there is a large suite of applications available. For keen photographers such as myself, Lightroom is still available to purchase individually. So what you can do in this case is just buy a single app subscription, such as Photoshop, and just use those two. Photoshop CS6 is still available, but for how long remains yet to be seen. So how much does it cost? For a single application subscription, you can pick up one up for around 17 quid, but you're tied into a 12 month contract and you only have a limited number of applications that you can get on this subscription. If you want to cancel at any time, then of course you're going to have to pay more money. And if you happen to have CS3 or above, you can pick it up for around 9 quid a month, which of course is highly likely to change next year. The complete Creative Cloud costs around 47 quid a month, and if you want to cancel at any time, it goes up quite dramatically to 70 quid a month. If you again, if you happen to have CS3 or above, there is more options available. If you've got CS6, 18 quid, and CS3 or above, then 27 quid a month. Quite enticing prices, considering what's available. So, if you're a keen photographer who's never heard of Lightroom, you may be wondering what it is. A typical point and shoot camera only records images in JPEG format, where an SLR will record it in RAW. RAW allows you to recover much more data in the image that would otherwise be unavailable. So here you can see I'm adjusting the exposure to bring back the sky, because it's slightly overexposed. Similarly, if you have a slightly underexposed image, you can bring that detail back. However, if you've really overexposed or underexposed, there's only so much it's going to bring back because it will just introduce noise. So here you can see I'm doing some further tweaks, recovery, highlights. So in a minute, I'm going to use the adjustment brush to paint the sky to make further adjustments. In this case, I'm initially darkening it with exposure, but in a minute you'll see I'm going to switch that to a saturation because I want to bring out the blue in the sky. So this just gives you a quick highlight of what, what it allows you to do. So you can see I'm... Um, tweaking the exposure quite dramatically. And now I've changed it to saturation. I'm now going to tweak it up and really bring out that blue. Not too much, but enough to just emphasize it. So all of this editing is non-destructive. I don't need Photoshop in this case to do something as simple as this. I'll switch on the mask just so I can see a bit more clearly where I've painted. And uh, Lightroom allows you to do what I refer to as global changes. If you want to start doing more fancy stuff and tweaking, that's when I drop into Photoshop. So here I've finished that adjustment of the blue. And uh, we'll see a side-by-side -side view of what it looks like. Just get rid of those tabs on the left and right. And you'll be able to see a before and after comparison. So there you go. Original on the left, new version on the right. And I can undo any of those changes as what's known as non-destructive editing. In a second, I'm just going to crop it slightly, get rid of the other plane, and just reposition it while retaining the aspect ratio. So I can go and print it. So next, we'll just open up in uh, Photoshop CS5. Uh, just to give you guys an idea, if you've, if you've not played about with Photoshop, of, of what it can do. And with a bit of moving magic, I've uh, already done a little bit of editing, uh, but I've got those layers switched off. So that's the original that I've brought in from Lightroom. I've blurred it, the background so it looks a bit more dramatic, and then done some levels and uh, curve adjustments. So if you're into photography only, you're likely to want to get Lightroom outright and get a single app subscription for Photoshop. For myself, however, because I'm now doing YouTube, Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere are extremely enticing and I'm likely to get the entire creative cloud. So if you found this video informative, educational or enjoyable, please leave a like. As always, feel free to leave a comment 
and to stay in touch with my latest vids, subscribe. Until next time, this has been Sim.